All right, so welcome to part two of the PowerDNS tutorials. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to install, just like we said in the previous episode or part, um, we are going to install the front end for PowerDNS. So this is called PowerDNS Admin and it is made in Flask uh, with Python. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is we're going to first of all install a bunch of dependencies. Um, so we're gonna go here and we are going to install all of these dependencies. This is going to be in the documentation of course. You can just go ahead and copy it from here and paste it there and just hit enter and of course I have already installed them before but it is going to install all of these for you. Now, once you have installed these dependencies, you're going to do these two curl commands right here. So, curl um, space minus s uppercase L space HTTPS um, colon uh, slash slash deb dot node source blah, blah 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 blah. And you're going to copy this command. And what this is going to do is this is going to um, basically import download and import the public key for from the Node.js repository and all of that. Uh, and you're gonna do the same with the yarn package. So in the, ca in, in the case of the yarn package, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do this, uh, curl right here, and then you're gonna do this echo. So this has basically added both the yarn and the Node.js repositories. After you've done that, you're going to go ahead and do apt-get update-y. And once you have updated the lists yet again, uh, you're going to do apt-install or apt-get install. It's the same. Yarn and Node.js. And you're gonna put minus y to hit the yes or no prompt. Now this is also gonna take quite a bit to install. Uh, and you're gonna proceed after it finishes to uh, cloning the PowerDNS admin repository from GitHub. So, um, if you don't have Git installed, it should be in the, de in the dependencies. Yes, it, it's here in the dependencies. Um, you're just going to go ahead and do git clone um, https github.com slash PowerDNS admin um, and just copy the repo link it's in the documentation, super simple to follow. Uh, so we're gonna copy uh, this link, clone it, clone the repo onto the var www HTML PDNS directory. And once we uh, finish cloning that repository, we are going to go into that directory. Uh, we're going to uh, activate the virtual environment um, that we are gonna create with Flask and then we're going to install all the requirements that we need. And after that, we are going to uh, set all the environment variables that we need and the config files that we need to um, basically host the front end GUI. So it is about to finish. Let's just wait a bit more and we should be good to go. All right, so it has finished cloning. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into that directory that we just cloned and we are going to create the virtual environment, the Flask virtual environment. Then after creating it, we are going to activate it. So basically you do virtual env minus p python3 flask to create it. And then you do a source of the flask slash bin slash activate file to activate it. Once we've done this, we are going to install the requirements. And if we are using um, PostgreSQL, as we are in this tutorial, you're gonna do ampersand ampersand pip install psycho pg2. So we're gonna install those, uh, those two things. So all the requirements and psycho pg2 to be able to use that database. It is going to take a bit. Now in this case, I have already done this before, so all the files are cached. But for you, it might take a bit to download all the dependencies and build the wheel, etc., etc. <clears throat> so we are going to, after we've finished installing the requirements, 
go ahead and deactivate the virtual environment. And we are going to, uh, let me do F5. This is all new docs. Um, we are going to go ahead and do a couple of things here. First, we are going to set our path for the production config file to a variable. So it's going to be prod config. So if we do echo uh, dollar sign prod config, it is going to give us this path, which is um, inside the configs folder in our PowerDNS uh, repository uh, directory. So once we've done that, we are going to go ahead and copy the development config file to uh, the path that we just um, made for our, uh, or rather selected, for our production config. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and replace all the variables uh, that we need to replace, uh, such as the, uh, uh, the database name, the database user, the password for that user, the port, etc. Now, if you have followed the previous tutorial part, you are going to have those um, either as variables in your bash shell, if you haven't rebooted in the middle, or you're going to have them in the OPT um, DB credentials, sorry, OPT PDNS install DB credentials file. Uh, now, if you have rebooted in the middle, you're going to want to do a source of that file. So, pdns install db credentials. And if you haven't, then you don't need to really do that. Now, once you've done that, uh, you're going to want to um, basically replace all these parameters with regular expression commands with sed. Now, if you want to do it manually, you can also perfectly go to prod config. Um, and you can go here and change all the parameters that you need manually, the user, the password, etc. But in this case, we're going to do it um, with the scripted uh, way that we have um, documented here. So we're just going to add all of this. And also, if you are using um, Postgres, we have to do a couple of things. Now, the first thing we, um, we want to do is we have to set the port. So we're going to grab this command right here, which is sed insert uh, after the uh, SQLA uh, database user line. We're going to import. Um, we're going to insert the port line. So if we do that, it is going to do that. Then we are going to comment the SQL Alchemy URI for SQLite, which is the default. Um, URI. So we're going to go ahead and do that as well. And then we are going to insert our uh, URI for Postgres. So it's basically just a concatenation of all our other vari variables to have a um, valid or legitimate uh, database URI for Postgres. So if we go ahead and do a nano of the file right here, we are going to see that, oops, we have there an N, which should not happen. Uh, I'm going to fix that in the documentation later, but shouldn't happen to you. Um, so basically, as you can see here, uh, we have SQL Alchemy database URI, and we have the whole uh, Postgres SQL URI. And then if we go up here and check, our user is our correct user, PDNS admin. Our port 5432, which is the default for Postgres. Uh, our password is the correct one. Our host is obviously local host because we have it in the same server. And then our database name is PDNS. And then our secret key is our API key. So beware, that has to match with your um, um, API key that you have set in the PowerDNS PDNS conf. File. So if we go here, you're going to see that it matches with this key. Um, so that is very important, otherwise the API is not going to work for you. Now once we've done all of this, that means we have the production config file set up. Uh, we're going to have to compile or build the front-end UI. So we're going to go ahead and go to this directory, if we are not in it, we are already in it, but I'm just going to execute the command anyways, because I just copied and pasted it. 
and then we are going to activate the virtual environment for Flask again. We're going to do the following, which is we are going to export the Flask app variable. So basically, you're grabbing the init.py file from your PowerDNS admin application. Um, and then you're going to do a DB upgrade. Uh, this is going to basically run a bunch of uh, migrations in your database. And then you're going to do yarn install and install all the dependencies that you need for uh, your Flask uh, build. So in your case, it might take a bit more. Uh, in my case, I have already done this before, so it has all the files cached locally. Um, so once your requirements have installed, what you're going to do is you're going to do Flask Assets Build. Uh, and this step is going to take quite a bit. So I'm going to skip over with the power of editing and get back to you in a bit. All right, so now that the build has finished, and yes, it does take quite a bit, so... I hope you got yourself a coffee or a tea or something like that. Um, once that is done, we can go ahead and finally deactivate the virtual environment and start uh, creating our config files for the systemd service, the socket, and our Nginx site. Uh, so what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to copy this onto um, um, the following file, which is et slash etc slash systemd slash system slash pdns admin dot service. We're going to go here, and I already had created it before, but you can just uh, paste uh, from the documentation. And then you can do the same for this file, which is the socket file. So if we go here, um, you just paste those uh, six lines or nine lines if you consider the white spaces. Um, after doing that, you're going to want to go to your Nginx um, sites enabled power DNS admin con. You're going to want to set up this entire file that we have here on the documentation as well. Now, once we've done all of this, I hit Control L to clear to clear the console. Once we've done this, we can do a change ownership of the entire directory to PDNS and www data. And we can go ahead and do nginx minus t and restart nginx. And then once we've done that, we can focus on finally uh, finishing all the um, socket and service stuff. So we've got a few things left to do. So we're going to go ahead and do echo uh, of this string right here onto slash etc slash temp files directory slash pdns admin conf, so we're just going to copy and paste that. And then we're going to create the directory run pdns admin, which in this case already exists because I did this before. Um, and then we're going to do a chown of these two directories to pdns as the user owner. Then finally, we're going to do a daemon reload of the systemctl or systemd, and we are going to enable both services. Now, if we do a check and see the system status, we're going to see that they are both um, up and running. So let's go ahead and open a new window right here and do HTTP and your address for your um, new DNS server. You're going to be greeted by the login screen, but obviously, since this is a new system, we don't have any accounts created. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an account. And we're going to put here, I'm going to put my name and uh, my email. And then I'm going to put an easy password. And then I'm going to go ahead and complete the CAPTCHA and hit register and get an internal server error. Because, see what happened. Okay, so don't put <laughs> don't put accents in your user. Um, so let's go ahead and redo that. And you do have to put the capture properly as well. So we're gonna do that again. 
three, nine, uh, six. I just start. And there we go. And now if we log in, we are going to be greeted by the um, default login screen uh, or home screen of the PowerDNS admin. Now you are going to have to go ahead and set up these API, uh, the, the API URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to do HTTP um, colon um, slash slash 127.0.0.1 port 8081 slash. I'm Dylan from the future and I am editing this video and I just realized that if you're doing this and it doesn't work for you, then it's probably because I forgot to mention in the video that you have to both go to your uh, PowerDNS config file and set API to yes, API key to your uh, PowerDNS API key, and then you need to go ahead and actually enable web server, uh, set it to yes in your same pdns.conf file, and set web server allow to your local area network as well if it doesn't if it still doesn't work. I think it should only be necessary to just enable the web server, but those are some things you can try. If you uh, can't get it to work, you can always comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Or without the slash, actually. And then we're going to go here and copy our PDNS API key. So we're going to grab this right here, copy, paste, save. And now if we go to dashboard, we should see that we have, well, no... Um, no entries here, but let's go ahead and create a test.com domain. Something like uh, this, uh, no template. We create the domain, and if we go in here, and for example, we add a record of, let's say, root. Um, it's an A type, and we're going to make it uh, 10, 10, 10, 24. So it's going to re reply that test.com is the same IP address. Now this is obviously not real because we don't have that domain, but it's just for testing purposes. So we go ahead and apply the changes, apply changes successfully. And what we're gonna do now is just to test it, we're gonna go here to our WSL, and we're gonna do dig test.com at 10, 10, 10, 24. And you'll see that voila, it answers with our new A record that we have created. So this is really amazing. Uh, it's an awesome tool, really beautiful. Uh, you can create domain templates. So here, as you can see, you got, um, well, these templates are empty. Ironically, they it comes with empty templates, but ignoring that, you can just, you can go ahead and create templates for your domain zones and really easily go ahead and, and create new zones super quickly based on a structure that you have or if you want to have um, email SPF records in all your zones or, or predefined stuff, it's really, really cool. Um, now, I'll be covering the front end a bit better in the next video, but I hope this was useful for you, and I hope that you um, get to use PowerDNS and check it out. And um, yeah, so have a great day, and I hope this was useful for you.